When that tea towel was stitched to that little black Gucci dress, I had no idea the reaction that was going to come. Let me tell you about the Union Jack dress. The 90s is very much like the 60s. It has a real strong flavor. The music was great, the fashion was great. You had the Calvin Klein simplicity. You had the tracksuits, Kate Moss, Oasis. You had the Spice Girls. It was really, really flourishing time in so many ways. Life was really getting started for me. It was brilliant. We've got the new single that is called true. Wannabe. Yeah. High hopes. I know, we're trying to be realistic about it, but we are optimistic as well. The first Spice album came out in the end of 1996, and it had done incredibly well. And we were in a whirlwind of promo, fun, and we were going to do the Brits, which is like the American Grammys. It felt like everything we'd worked for led up to that moment. And we were up for a few awards, which was really exciting. And I remember this little black Gucci dress got presented to me, saying, you could wear this. It was almost like, actually, a 1950s Marilyn-shaped swimming costume. Tom Ford was working with Gucci at that time, and he made it sexy, looking at that vintage construction. I thought, oh, maybe it's just a bit not really saying much. I've always tried to kind of put my finger to the wind and feel what's going on right now. And, you know, if I feel it, then maybe you'll feel it and we'll connect. So I remember thinking, why don't you? It's the Brits, British flag. And I don't know if this is true, but you're not meant to cut up a flag. I know in the olden days, you could go be sent to the tower. <laughs> and so I found a tea towel. My sister did it because she was better at sewing than I am. But I remember showing it to a stylist and she said to me, you can't wear that. She actually said, you cannot wear that. It's racist. It's national front. Now that is an extreme party that existed in Britain that was very racist. And I was like, oh my goodness, no, stop. We celebrate all cultures. So that's why I put the peace sign on the back. And then I had the red boots. My father's mechanic and I had car spray from the garage and sprayed it red to match. So the length of the dress is the sexuality and the big bobber boots is saying, you know what, you're not going to mess with me either. The all Spice and then the actual performance, we had our backs to the audience. So then you can see the peace sign, which is quite pleased. <laughs> it's a really high pressured moment. And I think we found power in each other. That was the whole point of the group. And then we walked down and we sang Wannabe. And then suddenly we went into Who Do You Think You Are? It was very, very sassy. You had a lot of attitude. When you perform, you get a very, like, caffeinated buzz from it. It's like, wow, this is electric. And that night, it's the first time we performed at a really big event. I want to get my lines right. I want to get my dance moves right. I wanted to deliver. I wasn't thinking about the end result. I woke up the next morning and the picture of me in that dress was on the front page of every newspaper. That dress really became the identity of what girl power stood for. People would wear their own version of it. Suddenly you started seeing the British flag on a lot of fashion. It came back to that thing of being proud of who we are. So it's funny. <laughs> I've always been like a, a secret fashion designer. Jerry Halliwell, otherwise known as Ginger Spice, has announced she's left the Spice Girls. When I left the Spice Girls, it was like a, a spit of a marriage for me. You know, it's like any relationship, you really want to just press the reset button. So I did an auction for charity with all my outfits from the Spice Girls. The last piece is the Union Jack dress, the Gucci little dress with a tea towel on it. There was a secret bidder on the telephone. I didn't know who it was. And it turned out to be the Hard Rock Cafe in Las Vegas. They paid 41,000 pounds, which turned out to be a world record for a piece of pop memorabilia. 
And then there was a period where I was just doing my solo career. It, it did pretty good. And see this British modesty, <laughs> it did pretty good. And actually my first solo song, there is a moment where I'm ginger in a coffin. <laughs> it's quite funny. <laughs> you see the British flag sort of pull up and there's the ginger. <laughs> So 2007, we decided the Spice Girls wanted to get back together. And this time the tour was going to be dressed by the designer Cavalli. Their clothes are sexy, flamboyant, fabulous, quite opulent. They definitely like the glamour. And so like, okay, let's do that. For me, wearing the Union Jack dress, I'm always quite mindful because it's had such a, a moment to sort of really try and recapture that moment. Is it really gonna work? We really needed to sort of turn the volume up on it. And Cavalli did that with crystals. And then it was me going, can we make it shorter? <laughs> I'm sort of in my mid to late thirties at that time. I think it's quite a hard age to be. You sort of still want to say, yeah, I'm still sexy. I've still got a figure, look. You haven't quite found the stoicness of a mature woman, but you're not the teenage bravado anymore. Where do you belong? And that dress, the Cavalli dress, absolutely epitomizes everything I was feeling. When you put the Union Jack dress on, it's like wearing the crown for that moment or your bride for that moment, that special feeling, it's your birthday. The wonderful thing was that you know, the Spice Girls fans have grown up with us. So it was lovely for every country that we went to, we'd see girls and guys in the Union Jack dress. It's almost like a uniform, unifying us all. From 2007 to 2019, a lot happened. There was lots of discomfort and restlessness in the world. It was coming on the back of the Me Too movement. It was quite dark. And actually, you know, the Spice Girls have always stood for positivity and lightness. And sometimes you just need that. And suddenly the idea came back again that perhaps we should do some more shows. But let's move it forward. The way I dress has always reflected how I feel about myself at that time. And, you know, I had children, I got married. I felt a sense of power in developing the dress into something different, something even more timeless, a complete queen's gown. For me, it shows the evolution of being a woman. As you grow older, this is the gift of age, you suddenly feel confident to cover up. It's really odd. When I was in my early 20s, you know, the skirt's up to here and I've got my big bobber boots and it's like, here I am. And then as I've grown into a woman, it's like, actually, I can just be still. I can just be here. This is enough. And it felt quite empowering just to walk on with a dress and say, do you know what, I've grown up. It felt like the power of a woman. It felt the evolution of girl power. And this is a good lesson to me. I always tell myself this is one, to really trust your instinct. You know, I got told not to wear that dress. It's wonderful 22 years later to still see people in a Union Jack dress. You know, that pride, that power, you know, that never goes out of fashion. Thanks for watching. We filmed that before the coronavirus outbreak. Now we really want to help, especially the vulnerable, and the elderly. If you'd like to help, please donate to Age UK. Every little bit helps. So thank you. Take care.